Is it ever smoky in here? I am just about to pull a small batch of candied salmon out of the smoker and I figured I should show you guys the recipe for this because it is absolutely delicious. But to do that, we're gonna have to go all the way back to the beginning. First thing we gotta do is get ourselves a salmon or a trout. Not too hard around here, especially when the fish move in at this time of year. Nice rainbow trout. Lake Superior delivers again. This one is going to the smoker, that's for sure. Alrighty, I've already cleaned this fish up a little bit, turned it into two fillets. Now we have to get the rib cage out, which is relatively easy. Just take a nice sharp fillet knife and begin cutting directly behind the rib bones, following those rib bones, leaving as much flesh on the fillet as possible. Just following from the inside of the fillet down towards the stomach like this. Trout and salmon have a lateral line. The lateral line consists of pin bones, which we want to remove. For the most part, these are easy to remove. I like to use tweezers. You could use pliers or something like that. Main thing is just to find them, gently give it a tug, and pull it out. They're really just like little stiff hairs that are in there. Once the fish is deboned, we're going to chunk it up into bite-sized pieces. You could do this with larger chunks. You could also do this with whole fillets. I just prefer to have my salmon candy in nice bite-sized pieces. Our brine is a mixture of 50-50 pickling salt and brown sugar. Just mix the two together and pour it into a container to suit the purpose. Put your chunks of fish in, flesh side down and skin side up. On top of those chunks of fish, put more of the mixture. And if you need to, put a second layer of fish. Again, skin side up, flesh side down. This is going to help draw moisture out of the pieces of meat while it marinates. Cover everything up with some more of the mixture, taking care to spread it around generously and covering every chunk of fish. Cover the container, pop it into the fridge for just about two hours, maybe three. I only like to go two or it gets too salty. This is what the mixture looks like after two hours in the fridge. All of that liquid has been drawn out of the pieces of meat. And in turn, the fish has taken on some of that nice sweet salty flavor. At this point, we'll rinse off each chunk of fish, making sure to get all of the chunks of salt and sugar off. Nice and clean. We'll put the chunks of fish onto a drying rack. I'm just using a dehydrator rack here. And we'll let them dry in the fridge overnight. 
This will allow the outside of the fish to form a pellicle, which is key to obtaining a nice, rich, smoky flavor. Don't skip out on this step. Now to get the fire going, we're going to smoke this fish with some chunks of maple. Allow the fire to start to smolder and get ready to put your fish into the smoker. We're going to start at a very low temperature so that the fish does not start to cook right away and instead just takes on the smoky flavor. Once your smoker is ready, it's time to pop the fish into the smoker. Okay. Now for the maple garlic glaze. A couple tablespoons of garlic quarter cup or so of maple syrup and we'll just mix this stuff up. After the fish has been in the smoker for about 30 minutes we can start basting with the maple glaze. We'll be doing this several times throughout the entire process. The goal here is to have a nice sticky, sweet and garlicky coating on each piece of fish. Fish has been in here for a couple hours now, so we're ramping up the temperature. We're up around 200 degrees now. We're just going to hold it at this temperature for about 15 minutes to finish things off. And that is the finished product right there. You can see who's waiting for a little treat. If you've had candied salmon before, you know what this is all about. If you haven't had candied salmon, definitely try it out. What you got? Candied salmon. Ooh. Mmm, oh, really good.